All right, we're going to take a look at wiring a soft starter using Schneider components. Now, we've gone through the theory on what a soft starter actually is. Let's talk about what these things look like in person. A bunch of these are going to be familiar components that we have gone through uh, inside of the course. If you're just watching this on YouTube, I teach electrical at a uh, local university out here. Anyways, we have gone through these before. There's another video on contactors and overloads. This is just going to be a DIN rail breaker. This is going to be a DIN rail power supply. This thing in the back over here is going to be my DIN rail. This up top over here is going to be my three phase power supply. We're just going to take it off of a breaker. This down here is obviously going to be the motor that we're trying to go and control. What is new inside of here is going to go and be this component. Now, this is what a soft start itself looks like. A uh, very similar look to a contactor. Most of these are going to go and mount inside of cabinets. The smaller ones for smaller horsepower are going to mount directly onto DIN rail. The larger ones are going to be mounted with bolts to the backside of whatever the can is that you're placing them inside. They are semiconductor. They are electronic. They do need to have some room around them to go and dissipate heat as well. <clears throat> They've got a number of terminals on here as well. A couple of terminals you should be quite familiar with. First of all, these ones up here at the very top, L1, L2, L3. This is going to be line side or power that we would go and feed into these components. These ones down here, T1, T2, T3, those are going to be load side that we feed power out of. On the actual soft start itself, we are going to go and have a number of settings that we can do as well. One of them is going to be initial voltage, in other words, what percent, so that we can get the startup torque that we need. We might be starting our motor at, you know, 60, 80 or something like that, and then ramping from there. Or we might be able to even start a motor for as low down as like maybe 30% or something. So we have an initial voltage over there. This one over here is just going to deal with the amount of time that that's going to take place over top of. What's new to us is these three terminals. And they are a CL1 slash 0, a CL2, and a 24V. And we're going to have to go to our instructor's documentation to go and figure out exactly what those components are, or what those connections are, I should say. Let's go and jump into, oops, sorry, that was Canadian Electrical Code there. I'm uh, looking for the PDF here, which was right over there. One second. Let's just zoom this thing back out and get it down to where we can see. So over here, we've got a manufacturer's data sheet for the Altivar uh, family of soft starters. We're looking at one of these smaller ones over here. There are larger ones as well, and there's definitely much larger than this. It's in the ATS 01 and 1 family. Going through this, we're going to skip past some of this, not because uh, safety is not important, but because you all read this anyways. I know that. I do it. You should as well. Uh, French and English here in Canada, they give us a little bit of dimensions over here for what uh, they look like so we can plan out cabinet layouts before we actually get our components. Down here, they give us a little bit more about mounting, how you can go and pop those little eyelets out so you can bolt them directly onto there. Then we get through a chart that's going to be all of my different screws, the torque that I'm allowed to go to with them. The gauge of wire that I can stick into them, AWG 14 and smaller, all the way up to a number eight on these other ones. And then torques that I'm going to go in foot pounds or Newton meters inside of there. It also talks about the types of fusing that I can go and place on these maximum sizes of fuses based upon, you know, the individual size. These are the larger ones. These are going to be the smaller ones. And they tell us about these class J fuses, which class J is to do with from what we've covered before our speed of operation. We're not dealing with all of that right now. This is what we're looking for over here. Now, this is going to be somewhat of an unfamiliar layout because it's a European standardized rather than the North American standard that we have. A couple of things that I want to point out about here. First of all, we can soft start a three phase motor. We can also soft start some types of single phase motor. Not every type, but some types. Remember that a single phase motor is working off of a lagging effect, which means that it is working off of capacitance. That's why we put the capacitor on the side there as well as off of the depth of the windings and the AWG gauge, which gives us a certain amount of XL. And that is all based upon frequency. The XL and the XC, the capacitance and the inductance inside here, is based upon 60 hertz. A soft start does not change frequency. It just ramps the voltage at frequency. So if I'm operating at 60 hertz here, I'm still operating at 60 hertz here, but with a reduced voltage. Now, not every motor is suitable for it, but a lot of motors are. We're going to go down here first and take a look at our timing diagram. Then we're going to go back up to the connection diagram. They show us the dials, the start uh, time, 
and then the initial voltage, they don't put numbers to these because they can be used across a broad variety. Otherwise, people, you know, will go and say, well, 100% or 115% or things like that. We want to stay away from that as much as possible. Over here, we got a couple of things. First of all, we'll take a look. We've got U1 over here. U1 is going to be dealing with my main power that I would be bringing in. And it's showing, they show us over here, U1 is power brought into the top side of my soft start. That's the soft start itself. That when that power goes high, at the same time as U2 goes high, U2 over here is a control. This is coming off of a standard three wire stop start. I know it's difficult if you're not used to this in uh, you know, North American standardized wiring, but this over here is gonna be my stop. This over here is gonna be my E stop up ahead. So I got a stop and normally close stop. I got a normally open start. And then it goes down to this, which is a coil. It's a European standard for coil. So stop to start to coil. We see that this KM coil is also tied to this. This is the auxiliary contact. So this would be what we would use to call normally our seal in contact. This over here is just a discharge in case this was a DC coil. Okay, it's a snubber circuit around there. You can ignore this, practically speaking, for what we're looking at over here. But look across the top line, stop to start to coil with the seal in contact from that coil across there. It's laid out vertically rather than horizontally. But what we're noticing is that the voltage that we are sensing, this U2, is basically the voltage across the coil of my contactor. We're going to send that coil contactor voltage back into this soft start. So that's the U2 that we're seeing. So I see when U1 and U2 both go high, that what I'm going to go and have happen is I'm instantly going to go and get some voltage that's based upon the initial voltage setting. So whatever I've set up, I'm instantly going to go up to X amount of voltage. And then over top of the time that I've set, I ramp all the way up to full voltage. Let's give these some numbers. Let's call this top line over here 600. This might be 300. And I would set that off of this P2. So off of P2, I'm going to set that thing, you know, so that it's enough that it can start roughly 300 volts. And then if this is set to 20 seconds, that would mean that the instant I turn it on, it goes immediately to 300. And then over the next 20 seconds, it's going to ramp all the way up to the 600. Okay, and we see over here that when we shut it down, there's no ramp down. We just allow our motor to coast to stop. There's no braking, uh, dynamic or regenerative or anything like that that's applied with this. Let's jump back up to here. Uh, over here, we see that we have got this CL10. CL10 is basically our reference. What we take in for U1, or sorry, for U2, can be based off of whether it's 24 volt or off of its 12240 uh, volts that we would have. So we're gonna select one of those. If this coil here is a 240 volt contactor, this lead would connect to the 240 and I'd have nothing connected to the 24. If however this control circuit was 24 volts, then I would have my common connected over there and then my 24 volts that's feeding into the coil, I would connect to this 24 volts over here. Last thing that I'm going to talk about on this sheet over here is the fact that we do have this. It shows as a switch, but that's the European standard for a contactor over here. Uh, this is a contactor that is upstream of this. Remember that this is a solid state device. It has got SCRs in it. As we know, all solid state devices are going to go and be leaky. So we don't want to go and allow, you know, the motor to be isolated by that. In fact, we are strictly forbidden from that inside of our Canadian Electrical Code. That's why I had this document uh, ready to go. Under 14700 solid state devices, that's going to go and be VFDs or any sort of a soft start, shall not be used as isolating switches or a disconnecting means. We cannot use them. I know 14 is just dealing with protection control, but it's protection and control for everything, motors included. That's why we need that contactor upstream. All right, so let's transfer this now into an actual wiring diagram. We're gonna go back to here, all right? So we know that we need to have a contactor upstream of my actual soft start that I'm going to go and have in there. So let's start by drawing out, starting from my breaker over here, we're gonna go and carry power in. I'm just gonna carry the main path line. We're gonna start with line one over here. Line one is going to come in from my breaker. It's gonna go into line one of my contactor. From the bottom side of my contact, so remember it's going through the contact points inside of there, and then it is going to go through the overload block that's protecting the motor. We are going to run down to here, and then from here, we are going to go and run that into the top of my soft start. And then from my soft start, I'm gonna run that down to my motor. We've just got a three lead motor, okay? This is my complete path that this line one is going to take all the way to the motor. Okay, we're gonna do the other ones the exact same. 
line two, into the contactor, out of the contactor, and up and into the soft start. And then from the soft start, I'm going to run that thing down to the motor. And then my line three, yeah, you guessed it, exact same thing. We're going to run in, we're going to go run down. Should have left myself a little bit more room, but you can follow that along. And then all the way down to here, and then into my third leaf. So this is the main power distribution path. All right. This is going to be, uh, we're going to use for this example, we're going to call this thing a 208 volt motor because that's the voltage range that we're able to use these soft starts in. They're limited to the 240 volt range. And it's my 208 volt breaker that I'm going to go and have over here. So now let's talk about the controls. Uh, we are going to do the controls twice over. Okay. Once for 24 volt controls because it's different. And once for my main uh, 208 volt that I would have coming off of this break because we can utilize either. First thing that we are going to do is we're going to go and tap from our contactor and we're going to go and apply power to our controls circuit breaker. Okay, it's just something that we do. Uh, we want to go and make sure we've got a way to go and disconnect and shut off all of our controls so we can work on it. Uh, what we're going to start with is we are going to start with now doing controls at 208 volts. Okay, then we're going to go and duplicate. We're going to do it then at 24 volts. Let's just go and pick out a different color for this. We are going to go and start with my uh, brown, which is going to actually, no, we'll go with the orange over here. So I'm going to feed from the bottom side of this breaker. Everything from here is going to be orange. Well, the first thing that we are going to feed into is going to be this, which is going to go and be my stop button. From there, we are then going to go and feed into my start button. And then from my start button, I'm going to feed back down and into my coil over here. Okay, that gets power to the coil. If I would press the start button, I would now have delivered power to the A1 of the coil. From the other side of the coil, <coughs> we're gonna pick up with A2 over here. We're gonna run A2 down through to the normally closed on the bottom side of that uh, contactor over there. That's the overload block, that's sensing. And then from the other side of there, we are going to run up to there. Now note that we're able to go and have our overload on the downstream side because we're dealing with two weight volts. Once again, if we were dealing with a grounded voltage underneath, you know, Canadian Electrical Code, section 28, 28500, I think is the uh, one off the top of my head there. That's where you would find out that if it was grounded, you would not be allowed to have this disconnecting means down here on the neutral side. It would have to be moved to the other one. But for this one, it's fine. So we're going to leave that alone. All right, so what we've got so far is we've got power applied to the coil. From here now, what we need to do is we need to go and seal this thing in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from my A1. I prefer going from my A1 to here because if you're working inside of a cabinet, you'd be running all of these up through the finger duct over top of there. So you don't want to go to the opposite side. So I jumped to the same side of the contactor. That's going to take care of that one. I'm going to come from this other side of the start button. I could take from either terminal. This is the same wire throughout. So I'm just going to grab it from here because it's convenient. And I am going to go and run that down over here. So at this point now, we have got a seal in for this circuit. We press the start. It's going to go and seal in that contactor, apply power. Perfect. Refer back one more time now to our soft start manual. Take a look and we see that whatever my coil is, my coil is going to be placed in parallel with the common and then with the proper voltage range, either CL2, which is for 110 through 240 volts, or for the 24 volt. In our case, what we're working with is we're working with a 208 volt set of controls here right now, directly wired off of there. So we are going to be going to the CL2. Let's just follow those through. All we would need to do is go from the common, so we're going to go to the one side of the coil over here, Come from there, and I'm going to go and take that to the common. And then I'm going to go across to the other side of the coil. Here's that A1. We see we've jumped from there to there. I'm going to take it from the next screw terminal because I don't like going more than two wires under a terminal. That's crap, okay? Uh, I'm going to go from there down, and I'm going to go and tie that in over there. And at this point, we would now have our soft start ready to go. We need nothing tied at that 24 volt. We would be able to go and press the start button that we have up top over here. If we were to go and press that start button, then we would go and energize the contactor. When the contactor coil pulls in, that's going to supply power directly over to our soft start. And then our soft start is going to go and start its ramp up based upon the initial voltage and the time. 
They're really simple devices. They're just a downstream control from our contactor. All right, going back into this one more time, we are gonna change our voltage now because we see that we're able to do this thing for 24 volt as well. I'm gonna show you though that it's almost the exact same thing. We're gonna now go and take these lines that we have, uh, all of this pink and orange, we're gonna go and erase them all. And we're just gonna start right from the top down, running through all of these. So we're back down to just the power distribution. First thing we're gonna do with our power distribution is we are going to go and take that into this. This is a DC power supply, DIN rail mounted. They're handy little things. Uh, I usually stick with a single build all the way across, you know, and then they, you know, everything is rated to be able to work together. Now what I've got is I've got 24 volts. So I'm now gonna be able to take a plus and a minus from the top side. I am not gonna ground this DC supply. I could, but I'm not required to. Uh, if I did, actually, no, I am gonna ground it. Might as well. We will cover that coat. Okay, we're gonna go and run a ground into this one over here, and I'm just gonna go and tie that thing down with a screw to the cap, okay? That's gonna ground my negative, which means that now I've got a grounded negative, so I'm gonna to have to place my overloads in the front. We're gonna use our IEC colors, which are gonna be brown, and I'm going to go and run through my controls, okay? We're gonna start now by running from here. I'm going to go and take this into that terminal over there, my overload. From my overload, I'm then going to go and take this thing back out. And now I run it up top into my stop button. From my stop button, I'm then going to run it into my start button. And then from my start button, I'm going to go and run it now down to my coil, okay? Exact same layout on the stop start buttons as what we had before. Just we see that now we take all of our positive volts from here, run them through the normally closed first, then into the stop, then into the start, then down to the coil. On the opposite side of the coil, I am then going to go and attach from my A2 back to my negative. We're gonna go and use the IEC standard blue for that. Oh man, I went a little bit off the page. Things get sloppy over here, I need more coffee. All right, there we are. So that now takes care of pulling in the contactor. It's not gonna seal in yet until we go and apply that. So let's just go and apply those last lines. I'm going to go and have a jumper from my A1 to my normally open. And then from the opposite side of the start switch, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to take a jumper down to my 14 over here. Now we have got this thing sealing in. The very last thing that we need to do is now we need to go and take that control and apply it over to the contactor. Once again, this over here, U2, we see that in parallel with the contactor coil, we are going to go and have the actual soft start. So let's go and do that one. We are going to go and take this because that's attached to my negative side, my common side. That is going to go down to my CL10. And then we're gonna go across from the other side of the coil. Over here is the other side of the coil, but we got two wires under that terminal already. So we'll go and follow that wire up to its next jumper over here. And we will take that across. And now we're going to take that one into the 24 volt terminal. And we're gonna abandon the CL2 terminal because we're dealing with 24 volt controls here. All right, that is it. That is our complete rundown on how to properly go and wire one of these. Now it looks like the dog's breakfast over here. Terrible look, uh, because we're not running everything inside of finger dot. Normally we would go and run everything through finger dot from one to the next, but you know, this just makes it easier for us to follow on paper. All right, that's it.